Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the 2023 NCAA Selection Show on NCAA.com. I'm Brendan Gulick. It is so great to be with you as we launch our tournament to see which teams are going to compete to cut down the nets as the new national champions. It's been another great year in D3 basketball, and frankly, we've seen a bit more parity at the top of the table this year. There are more teams than normal that feel really good about their chances to make a deep run in this year's bracket. It's also a very special year for women's basketball because for the second time ever, all three women's basketball national championship games are held in the same city on the same weekend. It's been seven years since we were all together in Atlanta for the 2016 national title game. That was between Thomas Moore and Tufts. This year, our national championship will be played at American Airlines Arena in Dallas on April 1st, alongside the D2 and D1 national championship matches. Before we go too far, a couple housekeeping notes for you. This year's tournament features, as usual, 64 teams, 44 automatic bids for winning your conference tournament, one invitation available to a collection of schools that play in conferences without an AQ bid available to them. That means the other 19 spots of the bracket are true at-large bids awarded to the schools that the National Selection Committee says are most deserving. We'll begin play this coming weekend. Games are on March 3rd and 4th, 16 schools hosting pods of four teams each. Those 16 winners will be sent to four schools for the sectional round March 10th and 11th. All of those games will be broadcast or streamed by the host institutions. After the bracket's been made public, we'll share all that game time in, uh, information with you over on NCAA.com. You can find all that info available on school websites for each of the teams competing in the field as well. National semifinals this year are on Saturday, March 18th in Hartford, Connecticut, where Trinity College will host the top four remaining teams. Those two semifinal games will be streamed on NCAA.com, 5 p.m., 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Then two weeks later, of course, on Saturday, April 1st, in order to have this awesome celebration, our national championship will be held in Dallas. That game will be televised live by CBS Sports, tip-off scheduled for noon Eastern. We'll have ticketing information available for you here as well. Before we get to the bracket, we got the most recognizable analyst in Division Three Hoops with us this afternoon. It's Dave McHugh from D3Hoops.com and the Hoopsville Podcast. Dave, before we dive in, just want to say thanks on behalf of the entire D3 basketball community, man. You guys and, and your team do such an amazing job covering our sport, and in so many ways you become synonymous with the success of D3 basketball. So thank you for the work that you guys all do. Any thoughts off the top of the show here before we get started? Well, thank you, Brennan. I appreciate that. That's very kind of you. A couple of thoughts to keep in mind. Women have priority in the opening weekend, meaning we've already seen, if you've watched the men's show, some hints at who will be hosting in these games. They don't get the priority the second weekend. That's where it swaps to men. So just some things to keep an eye on when you're looking at the bracket. Also, make sure you take an eye when we see the bracket later at some of the times that have been posted for these games. The women have taken on a nice twist from the men, and it's really appreciative. I, I think we're going to get a good balanced uh uh, bracket here. I think we got some fascinating matchups as we always do. There's a lot more parity in women's basketball than in the past and a lot, uh, some newer teams rising to the top. I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, me too. Let's get to it. Let's start in the top left-hand corner of the bracket where one of the top teams in the country is hosting to open things up. It's the New Mac champions from Smith. Quality of play in New England this year was outrageously good. And frankly, the New Mac champs just might be the best of the group. Pioneers have the depth and the star power to really make a deep run in this year's tournament. They beat Babson Sunday to lock up a conference title. Now they're taking their talents to the national field for the fifth time in program history. They'll play Morrisville State, the champion for the United East Conference, who for the second straight year is in. Congratulations to the Mustangs. The tournament now two years after have never been previously invited prior to that. See if they can build on their first round loss to Gettysburg from last year. Marymount back this year. They topped Cabrini in the Atlantic East title game on Saturday. Saints haven't been in the national tournament since 2020 and have been led by Samantha Shackelford and Chandler Edelton, who both had great seasons. St. John Fisher on the bracket here, back-to-back -back champ in the Empire 8. Cardinals beat Nazareth this past weekend. They ran the table perfect 18-0 in league play. They lost only twice, and both of those were way back in November. It means the Cardinals have won 21 games in a row. 19th NCAA championship for them, including their third straight. Mary Washington earns an at-large after losing to Christopher Newport in the Coast to Coast Championship Saturday. Jordan Carpenter earned uh, first team all-conference honors. She paced the Eagles with 30 points in that title game. First time since 2017, the Eagles are back in the field. 
Roger Williams beat Endicott in the Commonwealth Coast Conference, so they're in here after capping an awesome season that was also an 18-0 mark in the league. The uh, Hawks played in just one of the best opening round games of the tournament last year, but ultimately fell just short of Bates. Mitchell rampaged Eastern Nazarene in the NECC final. That means the Mariners are the league's first ever women's basketball champs. Only had four teams in the league this year, but still received an auto bid. It's the final season of the grace period after dropping below the threshold for the NECC. And last team in this uh, part of the bracket, it's DeSales who comes into the tournament true to form. The Bulldogs allowed the fewest points per game of any team in America, and they suffocated Stevens in the Mac Freedom title game, 59 to 36. Bulldogs held the Ducks to 27% shooting and forced 24 turnovers to win their fifth straight Mac Freedom title. What do you think, Dave? Well, first and foremost, they're treating Smith as the top team in the NCAA tournament here in this position. And this is something Lynn Hersey and her squad have been building towards for a number of years. They have had a dominating season. They have been a very good program for the last few years. They've been in the top five, top 10 conversation the entire year. Hats off to the Pioneers, an all-women's school out of Massachusetts. They are very deserving. Morrisville's is going to have a very tough battle there. Marymount, never count them out. They almost made the semifinals a few seasons ago. You just never know what you're going to get out of Marymount. And that's going to be a tough test for St. John Fisher, who does make it uh, a second cons uh, consecutive conference title rolling over Nazareth. 19th appearance in the NCAA. They're certainly experienced. Mary Washington back in. They are battle tested. They have some big wins over Gettysburg, Randolph making this year, and they have to take on uh, Christopher Newport every season. So you know Dina Appleberry's squad's going to be tested, and they're back in since the first time since 2017. That's a hell of a battle with Roger Williams. I love Roger Williams' team this year. I think they're a tremendous matchup. Uh, Kelly Thompson's done some amazing things with that group, and I'm really rooting for them. Uh, but unfortunately, taking on the team I'm also rooting for. Hey, the sales, by the way, five straight MAC titles, but they're at home. That's huge because, uh, well, they're really tough at home. 41 game winning streak is on the line. They are 64 in their last 65 home games are a victory. Mitchell's gonna have a lot on the table there against the DeSales Bulldogs. By the way, DeSales basically as a conference will dissolve next year. Moving on to one of the more fun at large selections here. Nobody was hoping for a bid more than Trinity. The Bantams lost to Tufts in the NESCAC final, but they got invited to the tournament after a fabulous season. Of course, it's been on their minds all year that the national semifinals are going to be held on their home floor before the title game goes to Dallas. This season is just the third time they've ever won at least 20 games in their first NCAA tournament appearance since 1997. They're going to open up with Notre Dame from Maryland, who beat Clark Summit yesterday in their first ever appearance in the CSAC title game. Notre Dame hit five threes in a 29-point third quarter to put the Gators way out front. They never looked back. If you listen closely, you can probably still hear the echo of the bubble that popped when Cortland beat SUNY New Paltz in the conference title game Saturday. Red Dragons registered their first and only win this season against another regionally ranked opponent, but it came when it mattered most. They punched their ticket back to the field. St. Vincent, the top team coming out of the PAC this year. Nice turnaround for the Bearcats. They were 8-14 last season, third conference title in the last five years, and their fourth invite to the national tournament. Ohio Wesleyan gets this year's bid from the NCAC. Battling Bishops beat Oberlin Saturday after the Yo women knocked off top-seeded Wittenberg. They stole a bubble from somebody. Wesleyan was outscored 27-3 behind the arc in the title game, but they made, for, uh, made up for it at the free throw line. First conference championship since 08-09. Last automatic bid to be handed out this past weekend went to Gustavus Adolphus, winners of the Minnesota Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. They thumped Concordia Moorhead, cut down the nets at home. Webster on the bracket, champions of the SLIAC. Gorlocks have won three of the last four and now four of the last six in the conference. They survived a late push from Westminster Saturday. And hosting duties to Wisconsin Whitewater, who's ready to prove last year's thrill ride to the national championship game was not a fluke. Warhawks are WIAC champs again this year, and they've taken a couple hits during the year. But what school in their league doesn't? Carrie Carollo, 21st season. She's taken her teams to the national semifinals four times. Last year's national coach of the year, and now her team led by her daughter Casey, who's having an All-American caliber season. They beat Eau Claire on Sunday, and the Warhawks are ready to make this year the season. They're the queens of Division Three. What do you think, Dave? Now, Trinity, Connecticut is the home of the semifinals this year, and they would love to go all the way to those games while riding that home court advantage. They'll take on the Gators of Notre Dame of Maryland. Just, just to be clear, this is the Maryland team. 
uh, in their, uh, believe their final season as a single sex institution, but they've had a really good basketball team of late. Trinity shouldn't overlook them. Cortland taking on St. Vincent all the way out in Connecticut. That's an interesting matchup. I think that's going to get some attention. Because Davis uh, knocked off Concordia Moorhead in the conference championship game. Con Concordia Moorhead was having a magical season because Davis shot 77% in the first quarter to end that one pretty early. Uh, Transylvania, where are we here? Yes, I I'm, I'm right. Uh, Ohio, sorry guys, blowing that one. Whitewater is what I wanted to talk about. Carrie Carollo's team is fascinating because it's being led by her daughter, who's a sophomore. This is a team to watch, and I think Webster has a tough task, and then Ohio West and Gustavus Adolphus are going to have an even tougher task, whoever gets out of that. Hats off to Whitewater. Watch out for them. By the way, first time that both programs are in the tournament since 2017. Bottom left quadrant, Transylvania, one of three undefeated teams in D3 hoops. They're a serious threat to be the last team standing. Of course, they're hosting. They won the Heartland this year, haven't lost a conference game since 2020. Received nine first place votes. They have earned the right to stay home. For as efficient as they are offensively, that defense should scare you too. It's a three-peat for Rhodes, who pulled off the upset in the Southern Athletic Association Sunday. Beat top-seeded Center College to earn the auto bid in this field. They, uh, they're back this year, thanks in large part to their great play in the post. Man, they can rebound and block shots with the best of them. Emory, an at-large, flying high in Atlanta. They've made the cut in the field as an at-large since the UAA Conference, of course, doesn't have a postseason tournament. Emory 17-7 this year. It was still enough to get him in the field for the fifth time in program history. Milliken gets an auto bid from the CCIW. They handled their business in the tournament backing up their regular season title. Big Blue led by former National Player of the Year, their head coach Olivia Lett, who won the national championship with Illinois Wesleyan back in 2012. For the 18th time in program history, Wisconsin Oshkosh is in, an at-large to the Titans, who fell to Whitewater in the semis of the conference tournament. Titans were 1996 national champs. And they put the 34 and 15 overall tournament record to test against this year's field. They'll start with Washington and Lee, who continued its record-breaking season with a 22nd win in a row on, or I should say, just 22nd period on Saturday, not in a row. They won the ODAC title, get the AQ. Generals play a lot of depth, but their freshmen are very talented. Mary Schlusner and freshman sharpshooter Quinn McGinnis have been a huge boost. The Pool B, this, the pool B bid this year goes to Berea, back in the field as the winner in the Collegiate Conference of the South. Mountaineers don't have a lot of D3 history as a program, but they sure have been good. They've won at least 22 games each of their first six seasons playing at this level. Last team in this quadrant is hosting, and it's in Ada, Ohio. The Ohio Northern Polar Bears, who finished the regular season, top-ranked team in the Ohio Athletic Conference, backed it up with a tournament title on Saturday. Polar Bears have historically been NCAA tournament regulars. This is their 10th occasion, but as the league's been dominated by John Carroll and Baldwin Wallace in recent years, this is the Polar Bears' first trip to the national tournament since 2017. Bryn Serban leading the way for them. Dave, what do you think? Let's move on as Loris comes back to the bracket. Loris with an auto bid after the Dewhawks knocked off top-seeded Wartburg in the American Rivers Conference, make it four titles in program history now and a trip back into the field for the first time in seven years. They've been a top 10 free throw shooting team this season. They've won 10 straight coming into the tournament. These are always fun moments. For the first time ever, Knox is going to the NCAA tournament. Prairie Fire put Galesburg, Illinois on the map this afternoon. They slipped past Ripon on the Midwest Conference title game on Saturday. Give Knox credit after a really tough day from behind the three-point line. Figured out a way to grind out a victory, and they get to play this week. Washington University is in an at-large bid to the Bears. They get a bid after a brief hiatus. They had been to the tournament 31 years in a row. Then that ended in 2019. And of course, they have played well enough this year that they got back in. Bumpy last couple weeks, but the Bears make the cut. Big deep breath for the Trine Thunder after clinching a share of the conference regular season MIAA title. They lost to Hope in the championship game Saturday. Trying sixth straight shot in the NCAA tournament. Another undefeated conference champ, it's Messiah, the Falcons, 
who are dancing again. Mac Commonwealth champs started the season three and two, and they've won 22 in a row since then. They're as hot as anybody coming in. It's also their 22nd all-time appearance. They'll host Bridgewater State, who outlasted Westfield State in yesterday's MASCAC final. So the Bears are through to the tournament. 21 wins represents their best season since 2013. Greensboro College is in as the champs in the USA South. Nice to see the Pride finish the job this year and punch their ticket. After last year, they took just their second loss of the whole season in the conference title game. But they were left home at 25 and two, seventh championship in program history for Greensboro. And NYU, automatic bid, the only school in the country to get one without winning a conference tournament out of the UAA. But as usual, the Violets rest the league well tested. NYU 22 and two, they are a serious threat to make it to Trinity in a couple of weeks, mostly because of their fabulous defense. Dave, what do you think? A couple quick notes first. I just love the Knox Prairie Fire. Uh, favorite mascot now, great story about getting to the NCAA tournament under a coach who has a ton of division one experience came to Division Three to get some head coaching experience and has really had this team buy in. This is a great story. I think Loris is gonna have a little bit of a battle here. Wash U was thought to be maybe a host at some point in the last couple of weeks. It hasn't materialized and we got that hint with the men hosting on the men's side of things. Messiah hosting's a note because NYU is technically the higher ranked team, higher seed team, however you wanna use that language in this pod. NYU can't host, they didn't put into host because unfortunately they were about to open up their brand new facility with a brand new basketball coat for first time in six years and a water pipe first ruining the court. So they don't have a place technically to play in the postseason. So this is really an NYU bracket being hosted at Messiah. I think there's some fascinating matchups there. Greensboro, Greensboro's gonna be at Messiah. I love it. All right, we're halfway through the bracket. I'm gonna take a quick commercial break. Be back here in just a few moments. We'll go to the top right next. There's an energy swelling out beyond the limits of your expectations. A universe where fandom reigns supreme. Once you're in it, it changes you. Instead of one of one, you're one of many. A blissful sea of chaos. Go beyond your limits and enter the NCAA universe. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets. Welcome back on NCAA.com. Our selection show continues. Half the field unveiled. We move to the top right with still 13 at-large bids to hand out. We start this quadrant with the Christopher Newport Captains, coast-to-coast -coast champs. They come into the NCAA tournament, top-ranked team in the country. This is kind of hard to wrap your head around. Bill Broderick's team has lost only one game, one, since December of 2019. That lone loss came to Trinity in the third round of the tournament last March. They will host Brooklyn, who's been one of the most consistent teams in the country that doesn't get the appreciation that they deserve. Bulldogs have won at least 20 games, 10 straight years, and a win in the first round of the tournament would extend that to 11. They are once again City University New York Athletic Conference champions. Elizabethtown, an at-large bid after their second straight 20-win season, got off to the program's best start since the 86-87 campaign. Blue Jays take a plus 17 scoring margin into the tournament. One year removed from just barely missing the cut, an at-large bid to Stevens. Tournament for the fifth time in program history, first since 2018. We'll try to make a run in March after a 14-2 conference record in the MAC Freedom. It is a great day to be a Yellow Jacket. Baldwin Wallace back in the field with an at-large from the Ohio Athletic Conference. Jackets opened the year 13-0 before stumbling to Ohio Northern in January. In fact, they were 17-1 before they uh, got caught up a bit in the league. Still, few coaches in the country can get the best out of their teams the way Sherry Harrer can. 33rd year, 650 wins at least. Hasn't had a losing record in 31 seasons. 17th trip for BW. They're gonna play a team who's been waiting on pins and needles here, begging for a chance to keep playing. Welcome to the tournament to Wartburg, an at-large who likely got one of the very last bids in the field. They're out of the American Rivers Conference. Knights with their 16th trip in school history. Those two teams on the road to start the tournament. 
When people talk about D3 hoops in Wisconsin, the WIAC always the first conference to come up in conversation. But let's give St. Norbert some love here. Green Knights have put together an awesome season, ran the table with 18 straight wins in the NACC. In fact, they haven't lost since the calendar flipped over. Green and Gold are dancing into Pier for the 15th time ever, first time since 2017. And this pot is hosted by Hope, the reigning national champions, back to try to defend their title in 2023. Flying Dutch dropped two games this season, which is one more than they've dropped the last three years combined. Brian Morehouse's program is right now the measuring stick in the country. Their senior class is 102 and three. Dave, what do you think about the top right here? Now, a lot of interesting things here. Christopher Newport, first and foremost, congratulations to Bill Broderick. He's got 250 career wins now. And Sandra Fan is the first player to win four straight conference titles as a player there. During her tenure, 101 and 11, by the way. Uh, you mentioned how good they are in the last few years. That is certainly the case. Uh, they are 68 and 1 since 2019. Uh, Really interesting with Brooklyn. They're going to have to be Bulldogs here, unfortunately, if they want to try and get past the Captain Chaos defense that Newport em employs. Elizabethtown Stevens, interesting matchup because these teams are kind of somewhat close together and um, used to be on the opposite side of the same conference, but not anymore. Baldwin Wallace has taken on a bubble burster here. I think some people are going to be surprised to see Warpburg there. Maybe not surprised, but it certainly is going to ruin somebody's day. And hope until somebody can beat hope in the NCAA tournament, they should be the favorite to win it all. But look at that. Hope and Christopher Newport on the other side of a mini eight. That's going to be interesting if the two of them face off coming up in a couple of rounds. Time for the bottom half of the top right quadrant. Trinity, Texas on the board here. They are good enough to strike fear into anybody. You really can't have a conversation about the most consistently high achieving programs in the nation without quickly mentioning Cameron Hills Tigers. They've won 20 games nine years in a row if you discount the COVID season. Last year, they knocked out Christopher Newport in the round of 16, which turned out to be CNU's only loss in their last 67th games. Uh, tenth title in team history out of the SCAC for Trinity, Texas. One of the best conference tournament runs around the country came in the Lone Star State. Texas Dallas, the Comets beat East Texas Baptist to win the American Southwest title. Comets were the four seed in the league tournament, got hot at the right time, and their season continues this weekend. It is party time in Texas for Hardin Simmons. You're in with an at-large bid. ASC tournament hosts hoping to defend their, uh, their conference tournament title but they were defeated in the semis by UT Dallas. Snapped that 20 game win streak. Now they'll try to bounce back with their ninth NCAA tournament appearance. Redlands had one of the most dramatic wins during conference championship week. Bulldogs slipped past Laverne 70 to 69 in the Skyac title game. That win felt like retribution after last year's disappointing ending. Now they're gonna try and build on it against the best teams in the country. Liberty League champs next on the board, it's Skidmore. The Thoroughbreds nipped Ithaca in a bit of an upset on Sunday. Skidmore hasn't won more than 18 games in a season since 2010. But they're cruising into the field, feeling good about the way they're playing, and, and why not? After losing a couple close games at Ithaca in the regular season, they finally got them when it mattered most. Johns Hopkins in with an at-large. Top seed in the Centennial Conference Tournament, but they fell to Gettysburg in the championship. Even in the loss, though, they played well. Hopkins is in the field, 13th time in program history, third under Catherine Bixby. Two more teams here, U.S. Merchant Marine Academy, automatic bid, putting together a great season. They are the Skyline champs. Third time the Mariners have won the league title now. This, uh, this year is a bit more special, though. They've broken team records, 14 straight wins and 24 total. And there are not too many teams that play tough schedules the way that Tufts has to play them. Winners of the NESCAC this year, Tufts played NYU, Scranton, and Stephen on top of their traditional powerhouse foes in the league. Their win over Trinity secured a bid to a 14th NCAA tournament since 2008, including their 11th in a row. Tufts, the national runner up twice the last few years. Maybe this is the year they finally get it done. They're gonna host Dave, what do you think? Uh, by the way, you got our Texas pod up in that upper left-hand corner. And by the way, Cameron Hill's assistant coach for the last bunch of years at Trinity, Texas, was Joe Shotland, who's the head coach at Texas Dallas in his first season, taking over for Polly Thomason. So a little bit of a friendly rematch there uh, for Shotland, who's actually a Trinity alum, but li lived and grew up in the Dallas area. So that's a fascinating one. Interesting, they kept Harden Simmons in that pod as well and flew in Redlands. 
That's an interesting decision to be made there. And that Tufts matchup, that pod is fascinating. Skidmore versus Hopkins, I'm actually very intrigued by. Skidmore would love to maybe have actually cut down the Nets uh, for their championship and now would maybe like to take it out on the Blue Jays. But Tufts is going to be the beast there. They are a very good program, maybe not appreciated for just how good they are. Bottom right corner, now 16 teams left. Hosting duties for Babson, who lost to Smith in the New Mac final, but getting at large anyways. Beavers led by Judy Blinstrub, 11th winningest coach in D3 history. 20 or more wins 18 times. Babson ready for tournament play at home. They'll start with Maine Maritime, the 2023 champs in the North Atlantic Conference. Congratulations to the Mariners, first since 2005. Gettysburg, 2023 champion out of the Centennial. Bullets are flying high into the tournament. Nate Davis's team opened the bracket with a win last year before losing to BW on their home floor. Tenth appearance, seventh since 2010 for Gettysburg. They played six consecutive championship games in their league, and they have certainly earned their way back to the tournament. SUNY New Paltz gets an at-large out of the SUNYAC. Conference Player of the Year, Brianna Fitzgerald. Conference Coaching Staff of the Year, led by Jamie Seward. Hawks secured their first unbeaten regular season in program history. They fell to Cortland in the conference tournament title, but back in the field for the fourth straight time. How about those Marietta Pioneers, an at-large from the OAC? Doesn't really matter when you lose when you look at the resume. And admittedly, it took Cole Vivian's team a little bit to get going, but once they did, they've proven they could hang with anybody. Second straight NCAA tournament appearance for the OAC runner-up. Welcome back to the field, Eastern Connecticut, an at-large bid. The Warriors have lost just two games since December 1st, both of them to Rhode Island College, including when their 13-game win streak was snapped. They're back in the NCAA tournament out of the Little East Conference now for the 19th time ever. LaRoche won the AMCC in thrilling fashion to punch a ticket. AMCC champs beat Penn State Barons 71 to 70, thanks to Micaiah Hairston's last second layup. Third straight, 10th overall league title for the Red Hawks. Take a deep breath. You're hosting Ithaca. The Bombers are in and at home. Skidmore just snuck past Ithaca in the final. Blue and gold a little nervous today, but one of the most consistently strong programs in America is back in the field. They had won 16 in a row before dropping two of their last three at the end of the year. Liberty League regular season champs and their defense should lead them to some success in the tournament. Dave, what do you think? I love the Babson pod there. Maine Maritime all the way out in down east Maine, furthest east team, and I believe in the entire NCAA. So you, they don't have a lot of places they can get to. Babson's a perfect spot. Sending Gettysburg there with New Paltz, I love. It's a great little matchup. Gettysburg, a team, I'll admit, if you were looking at in December, you thought there was no postseason possibilities. They have figured things out and become dangerous. Really tough defensive unit. Watch out for the bullets. Nate Davis's squad is really good. Marietta, Eastern Connecticut. I love the fact that we can have a Connecticut and Ohio team meet up in New York, where LaRoche and Ithaca will be. Dan Raymond's squad for the Bombers at Ithaca might be one of his better teams he's ever had. Despite dropping two of their last three, they're a team you should be watching. Only eight bids left to give. We start with an at-large out of the UAA. Chicago is in. The Maroons open the year 16-1, and lost a couple times, but gathered themselves and closed strong. Maroons are dancing first time in three years, nine, time, nine times now total. Northwestern, the AQ, after beating North Central of Minnesota in the Upper Midwest on Sunday, second ever trip to the NCAA tournament, and their first since 2014. Back-to-back -back trips now to the NCAA tournament for Wisconsin, Eau Claire, and at large, of course, from Eau Claire, after coming up short against Whitewater in the WIAC, Blue Gold season continues this weekend. Whitman back in the field this year, determined to make a deep run. Last year's magical season came to a close in the second round. They get the AQ for winning the Northwest Conference. Make it three straight titles now in the Little East for Rhode Island College. The anchor women knocked off top-seeded Eastern Connecticut on Sunday. They showed big poise in those big moments in the game. Rhode Island hit 14 free throws in the fourth quarter on Saturday to seal that win. This year's NJAC champs are from Rowan, who won the league on Saturday for the eighth time. Props won the conference for the second time under Demetrius Poles. School seventh and eighth championships this year in any sport belong to their two basketball teams. Well done. Two bids left, St. Joseph's an AQ from Maine. They took the title in the GNAC, automatic bid that comes with it. The Monks beat the Emmanuel Saints in what feels like an annual meeting in the GNAC title game. 
And the last team on the board here hosting is the Scranton Royals, who become a perennial powerhouse in the national landscape. Landmark champs just completed their first undefeated regular season since 2016, when they finished 30 and one, lost to Tufts that year in the national quarterfinals. After winning an eighth straight conference title, the Royals feeling confident this is their 35th all-time appearance. Dave, your thoughts on these last eight teams? Well, congratulations to you, Chicago. Maria Williamson has done an amazing job with that program, taking it over prior to the, well, during really the height of the COVID shutdown and really has done well with the Maroons. And to be hosting in, in Chicago is big for this program. Northwestern St. Paul say this all the time. Watch out for these teams. They're the ones who can, can nip a big team if they're not paying attention. Eau Claire versus Whitman, this is great. You can get Whitman into Chicago, easy flight. Eau Claire can come down. You get a nice creative matchup here at Chicago. Rhode Island College, sneaky good, playing Rowan, another unique, uh, we don't really see that kind of crossover even on the East Coast. St. Joseph's Maine, I just want to tip of the hat to Albertus Magnus, had a tremendous season in that conference, but the, the, the beast of St. Joseph and the beast of Emmanuel coming out in those two. And Scranton, first year head coach, Ben O'Brien. It's amazing, Royals change coaches and they still stay good. Scranton is a very good team that I think is kind of not being noticed as much as many people would realize. All right, there it is. We got through it all. 64 teams that make up the 2023 National Tournament Bracket. Please stay locked in NCA.com. Follow the tournament every step of the way. That'll wrap up our show this afternoon. For Dave McHugh, I'm Brendan Gulick. Thanks for joining us. Good luck to everybody that's playing this year. We sure hope we're going to see you in Hartford for the semis and for Dallas in the National Championship game. There's an energy swelling out beyond the limits of your expectations. A universe where fandom reigns supreme. Once you're in it, it changes you. Instead of one of one, you're one of many. A blissful sea of chaos. Go beyond your limits and enter the NCAA universe. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets.